In this video, we will talk about what implicit differentiation is. And I want to motivate this with an example, which says, suppose x squared plus y squared equals 25, and I want to find dy dx. So this is different than the types of equations we've worked with before to get a derivative, because in stuff that we've typically seen, usually the y is isolated. So for example, if I had y equal the sine of x, this is what we'd call an explicit representation of the output variable y in terms of x. Whereas what we have, so what we have, x squared plus y squared equals 25, this is implicit. Our output variable is defined implicitly based off of this equation. Okay, and the graph of this actually has a nice shape. This is a circle. All right, I'm going to draw some axes. And if we draw this circle, this circle is centered at the origin and has a radius of 5. So it's going to go and look like this. So it is up to 5 here, 5 this way. This would be negative 5, and this would be negative 5. All right, so that is our circle right there. OK, so to take this derivative, one strategy, I'm going to call this method one, is to get it to a point where we can isolate the y. That gets it into a form that we're used to that we can take the derivative of then. So if we isolate the y, we get y squared equals 25 minus x squared. And then I'd have to square root this. So if I square root this and get square root of 25 minus x squared, Anytime I take an even root on both sides of an equation, I got to put a plus or minus. And that's giving me two possibilities now. Either it's telling me that, well, maybe y is the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. Or maybe it's telling me that y is the negative square root of 25 minus x squared. If y was the positive square root, notice that no matter what x is, when I take the square root of this thing, the output can't be negative because the square root of a number can't be negative. So based off of this, my y value is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's just going to be the top half of this circle. So if I draw some axes, this corresponds to just the top half of the circle because my y value is greater than or equal to zero here. So that's five. This is negative five on the x-axis and five on the y-axis. Okay. Whereas if I have the negative sign in front, now my y values are going to be less than or equal to zero. And this corresponds to the bottom half of the semicircle, where all the y values are less than or equal to zero. So this is 5 on the x-axis, negative 5 on the x-axis, and then negative 5 on the y-axis. That's what that graph would look like. So if we're trying to isolate y, our derivative will depend on where our point, I'll call it x comma y, is. Like, is it on the top half of the circle, or is it on the bottom half of the circle? Because that'll dictate which formula I'm going to use. All right, so what if I want to find the derivative dy dx at the point 4 comma 3? Well, this has a positive y-coordinate. So this would be on the top half of the circle. It would be somewhere here, maybe. 4, 3. So because of that, we would use, this is the top half, we're going to use the equation y equals square root of 25 minus x squared to take the derivative. All right, and we can rewrite this as a power, the root as a power. It's a 1 half power. And then we have that 25 minus x squared inside of it. And now we can take the derivative. So I write dy dx. And for this derivative, we need to use the chain rule. Because I have this inside function, this 25 minus x squared. And that's getting plugged into this square root, into this half power function. So the chain rule says we'll deal with the outside thing first, the 1 half power. The 1 half is going to come down. And I'll subtract 1 from the power to get a negative 1 half. And then the chain rule says, well, when you do that, when you deal with the derivative of the outside function, keep the inside the same. So we'll keep 25 minus x squared plugged in. 
But then we do the chain rule step in which we multiply now by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. All right, and now let's simplify this a little bit. So I'll have negative, the twos will cancel. I'll have an x. And then the negative 1 half power, let me bring that to the denominator. So it'll become a positive 1 half power, which I can rewrite as a square root. So I'll get square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, so we have this formula for the derivative. So if we, want, if we wanted our derivative, and now to plug in x equals 4 into this, we would get negative 4 on the top, and then on the bottom we'd get root of 25 minus 4 squared is 16. So we get negative 4 over square root of 9 is 3. Negative 4 over 3, that would be our over 3, that would be our derivative. So that's our derivative at the point 4 comma 3. I could also check this graphically using geometry. So if I focus in and I draw some axes and I draw our upper semicircle here, so I have 5 and negative 5 on the x-axis, 5 on the y-axis, and if I label the point 4 comma 3, but we are interested in knowing what the slope is of this tangent line. So there's a theorem from geometry that says, if you draw the radius to that point of tangency, that radius and that tangent line are, I'm deliberately pausing to see if you can fill in the blank, the radius and this tangent line are perpendicular. They are gonna be perpendicular. And I know this point is zero comma zero, so I can write this slope, the slope of this radius, if I use rise over run, the rise is three units over the run is four units. Okay, and then I can use geometry again because these two lines are perpendicular, the slope of this, I'll try M and this symbol for perpendicular, the slope of this perpendicular line is the opposite reciprocal. So when I reciprocal it, I get four thirds. When I change the sign, I get negative four thirds and that's matching with what I got using calculus, using the derivative. All right, so I wanna talk about another way that we can do this. So this is method two. So method two is going to be called implicit differentiation, which is the topic for this section. Okay, so the idea here is I wanna, I wanna think of y as a function of x, as a function of x, even though I don't have it isolated, I'm just gonna think of y as being some function of x. So I'll write y of x. Okay, so if I do that with my equation, I get x squared, instead of x squared plus y squared equals 25, I'm gonna write x squared plus y of x squared equals 25. All right, and now let's take the derivative of both sides. Let's take d dx, that's my variable that this is all in terms of. Take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Okay, so on the left I'll get d dx of x squared plus, plus y of x, that quantity squared. And on the right, I'll get d dx of 25. All right, so let's see. The derivative of 25, that's not bad. That's just 0 because 25 is a constant. On the left-hand side, the derivative of x squared, that's not bad either. That's just 2x. But for the derivative of y of x, that quantity being squared, this isn't just x squared. It's some stuff squared, some inside function being squared. So this is going to involve chain rule. Okay, so the chain rule says, well, deal with the outside thing first. Deal with that power. So that power is going to come down. I'm going to leave some space. I'm going to leave some space. And then subtract 1 from the power, so the new power is going to be 1. And the chain rule says, well, when you do that, when you take the derivative of the outside function, keep plugging in the same inside function. Keep plugging in y of x. And then we do the chain rule step, and we multiply by the derivative of the inside. 
So the derivative of y of x, well, we write that as dy dx. That's our notation for the derivative of y. If we wanted to here, we could also have just written y prime. That's also the derivative of y of x. It's usually convention with implicit differentiation to use this dy dx notation. So that's what I'm going to adopt. All right, so this gives us 2x plus, and now we have 2 y of x to the first. So y of x, remember, that was just the same thing as y. So let's just rewrite it as y now, y. And then we get times that dy dx equals 0. Now I just got to isolate the dy dx. Now we need to isolate dy dx. So if I subtract 2x over, we get 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x. And if I divide by 2y now, we get dy dx dy dx equals, we'll get negative x. Now let me write that fully. We'll get negative 2x over 2y. And this simplifies to dy dx equals negative x over y. And that is my derivative. I have a formula now explicitly. So we have this formula for the derivative. When we do implicit differentiation, our dy dx will usually involve both of the variables. It will usually have both, I'm just going to write vars, both variables in it. In it. Okay, with implicit differentiation. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bubble around this. Okay, that's happening here. So if I now write down my derivative dy dx, evaluate it at the point 4 comma 3 like I needed. Let's see, my x-coordinate is going to be 4. So I plug in 4 for the x. My y-coordinate is going to be 3. I plug that in. And I get negative 4 thirds. And that's the same answer I got using our method 1. Okay, so that's great. All right, so I want to make a note of something. So I want to notice that if I write ddy of y squared, so if the variable that I'm taking the derivative with respect to, which is y, because this is ddy, is the same as the variable in the function, in, in this case it is y in the y squared, then it's just a normal derivative, and I just get 2y. But if they're different, if I have something like ddx of y squared, then I'm going to differentiate this implicitly. I'm going to think of the y as being a function of x. And what I'll do is I'll do chain rule. So first I'll deal with the power and I'll get 2y, 2y to the 1 technically. But then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of y is just dy dx. Okay, so we are doing the chain rule since we're doing ddx means we think of the variable y as a function of x. All right. Let's do another example. Uh, whoops, forgot to put that cross there. Function of x. All right, so let's say I want to find dy dx at the point 4 comma 4. All right, so there is something I need to be super careful about. So if I just do the, what I did before, and I say, oh, dy dx, and I say dy dx at the point 4 comma 4, what I would get is, if I plug in 4 for the x and 4 for the y, I would get negative 4 over 4. But it turns out it's not that. And there's kind of a simple reason why, but I, I just have to know to look for it. And it has to do with the fact that the point 4 comma 4 
is actually not on this graph. It's not on the circle at all. It's not on the circle. Remember the equation of the circle was x squared plus y squared equals 25. And if I'm given a point like four comma four, I would just plug it into this equation to see is that point on that graph. So if I plug it in, I get four squared plus four squared. And is that equal to 25? Well, no, because the left-hand side is 16 plus 16, and that's 32. That's definitely not 25. Okay, so I'm trying to do this derivative at a point that's not even on my graph. So this is going to be undefined because this point is not even on my graph. I can't even draw this tangent line. So I can't talk about the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line. That's going to be undefined. 